This demonstration will show you how to use the Upload Document Wizard in conjunction with a K2 Smart object inside a K2 workflow. You can use this workflow step in any process that needs to upload a document to a document library in SharePoint. You might find this workflow step helpful in a new customer onboarding type process where you want to compile a package of documents from various sources for a new customer. Or it might be helpful in processes that perform document archiving tasks within your environment. In this demonstration, we're going to look at a small process that uploads a PDF copy of a reporting services report by using a smart object. Let's take a look at a scenario where I have created a contacts list in SharePoint designated to capture information about new customers for an organization. I also have a document library set up on this site called Customer Onboarding Packages. This library will be used by the workflow to upload onboarding documents for the new customer when they're added to the new customer list. And although we can set up a workflow process to pull together documents from multiple sources, including other document libraries, I'm just going to use this demo to show you how to upload one file using a smart object. So to save some time, I've already configured the basics of a workflow to begin automatically when a new customer is added to this list. To get the Upload Document step on the Design Canvas, we can find it in the Documents group of wizards made available in, on the ribbon menu at the top of the page. I'll go ahead and drag that step down to the blank slot on my Design Canvas in order to begin configuring it. And the first window that opens up asks us to select the document source. You'll notice here that there are a couple options for doing this. We can use a document reference that may have been set up in a previous step in the workflow, or, in this case, the attachments that are available on this contacts list item when it gets added to the list. If I had used the Get Document Reference Wizard in a previous workflow step, as shown here, the name of the document reference would also appear in this list. But because I'm going to pull this file in from Reporting Services, I'm just going to select the Use Content option for this demonstration and upload this file from the Smart Object that lives under the Smart Objects group in the Context Browser here on the right. I want you to know also that you can use any Smart Object that has a file type property available to it. Take, for instance, the Templates Smart Object here, which references a document library and another site in SharePoint. You can drag the document property over to the Use Content box from this one and configure it to load documents from the library based on some filter options that pop up. But for this demo, I'm going to use the Product Listing Smart Object to provide a PDF copy of the current product listing report that will get generated by reporting services when this workflow step fires. So to do this, I can open that up, scroll down, and open up the read method for export to PDF product listing. From here, I'll drag the report file property over to the user content box. When I drop this in the box, it's going to ask me to fill in some parameters needed to run this report. This will happen for any content property used from any smart object in order to help it filter for the correct documents or run a report. But in this case, my report doesn't require any parameters, so I'll just click OK to move on. But before moving to the next window, there are some options available at the bottom of this window that we still need to look at. You have the option to tell the workflow to overwrite an existing document in your destination library and also continue on if the existing document is checked out. Otherwise, if you don't select these two options, the workflow will stop with an error stating the fact that the file already exists and also that it is checked out. Once in a while, a document that you want to upload may not be found in the source, which can also stop the workflow with a message stating that fact. If you want your workflow to continue in this situation, feel free to select this last option called Continue if there is no document to upload, that is, if your process allows for it. I'll just leave these options checked for now, even though it doesn't really affect my scenario at this point. The next window asks you to specify your destination library. If you have a library already referenced in this workflow from a previous step, you could select it from the library list box under Use a library that is referenced in this workflow. I, however, don't have that luxury, so the other option we get is to browse for an existing library under the selected site collection here. I'll leave that set to the default collection since it's the only one that I have available. And finally, at the bottom of this window, we can also select a folder to put the document in. 
If the folder doesn't exist, K2 will create it accordingly. I'm going to use some fields from the context browser on the right to actually create one dynamically here, but I'll briefly pause the video to set this up before we move on. Okay, that's done. So on the next window, you can drill down to the specific library that you want the file to land in. At this point, I know my library lives in the sales site, so I'll go ahead and select sales from the list first. And there's my library. I want the customer onboarding packages library, and since it's the only one I have on this site, I'll just go ahead and select it, and then I'll move on to the specify values window next. This window will allow you to fill in library properties for the document. I didn't add any extra columns to my list, so the title column is all that is available. I'll fill this in with product list report to give the file some context. And then notice at the bottom of this window, there's a setting called Create Document Reference. You can select this if you need to reference this newly uploaded document later on in the workflow. You can give it a meaningful name and it will appear in the Item References group in the Context Browser on the right, or in some of the document reference lists in the other document wizards. I'm just going to leave it unchecked for now since I don't need it. And that's it for the Upload Document Wizard. So from here, I'll finish up and deploy the workflow. And then we'll flip back to the SharePoint site where I can show you how it works. OK, so we're ready to test this workflow out. And the way to do that is to just add a new item to the new customer list in order to start the workflow that we just created. To speed up the demo, I have another tab open with the new item form already filled in for a customer named Julie. So let's go over to that tab now. And as you can see, there's information about Julie and her business. So I'll go ahead and save this new item for Julie back to SharePoint. So at this point, K2 will be starting the workflow, which will go out to reporting services and run the latest product listing report as a PDF file. Once that completes, it will create the folder structure, if you recall, based on the customer's name, company, and workflow ID for uniqueness. And it will finally upload the PDF file to that folder. This may take a few seconds, so I'll just pause the video, and then we'll come back when the folder's created. Okay, here I am in the Customer Onboarding Packages library. Let's go ahead and refresh the page where the folder should be created for Julie at this point. Great, there it is. So let's go into the folder to make sure that the file exists. And there's the product listing report. So as you can see, the Upload Document Workflow step comes in pretty handy for a process like onboarding customers to your services. We would like to thank you for watching this demo on how to use the Upload Document Wizard. We hope you have a better understanding of how and when you can use this workflow step within processes used by your organization.